LSDJ is a music creation tool for the Nintendo Game Boy that takes the sound chip and allows you to create instruments, sequence melodies and combine tracks to create entire songs. It still amazes me that the humble Game Boy is still capable of producing such awesome music on the original hardware. Hi and welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and in this video I'll be showing you how I used a Nintendo Game Boy along with some software called LSDJ to create some new music to use in the videos on my channel. Now making your own music is not only royalty free, it's also a lot of fun and when it comes to 8-bit sounds it doesn't get much more authentic than using one of these little beasties right here. So before I delve into how I actually made the music, let's take a little look at the equipment you might need to get started. I still prefer using the original DMG style Game Boy for making my music. I like the feel of it in my hands, it's got a good weight to it, and it's got lovely chunky bass sounds to it. But any Game Boy from the original line, such as the Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance and SP, as well as countless emulators can also be used to create your sounds. Contrary to popular belief, you don't actually have to modify your Game Boy to use LSDJ. Having a backlit screen and a high quality stereo sound output definitely helps. What you will need, however, is some sort of USB or SD card based flash cartridge where you can install the LSDJ software, save your songs that you've created and be able to connect to a computer to back up the files that you definitely won't want to lose. So as you'll hopefully start to see over the next few months, I'm really trying to start to evolve the whole look feel and content on this channel and that started with the music. Now when I first started putting content together to post on this channel, I took a snippet from a song I'd already made and put together this familiar little sting. Now although I've grown quite fond of that little jingle, I feel like it's time for something new and something different. Now unfortunately the save file for that particular tune is long lost, but what I decided to do was start afresh and build a whole batch of new tunes inspired by that original riff. So how did I do it? Let's take a look. So for the purposes of this video, I figured I may as well use the Game Boy that I used to create the music. So that's this brown DMG Game Boy. It's got a rainbow IPS screen inside, which means you can use it to create lots of different color palettes. And I've been using my Professor Abrasive Drag and Derp cartridge. These are pretty hard to come by now. And unfortunately, my advice is limited in terms of new stuff because these are just so good. I've never had to buy a new one since. However, we'll pop that in there and we'll switch on. This has got what's called a Pro Sound mod. I've got another video about those elsewhere. And I'll be using my trusty IKEA Frequenz speaker designed by Teenage Engineering. It always sounds awesome when I connect up to that. So it's great for testing out my tunes compared to the little tiny speaker built into the Game Boy. Despite the upgraded backlit screen and the stereo sound output, this does still run off standard for AA batteries. I just like the weight of them in terms of the general feel of the Game Boy and having a different battery in there, it can just feel a little bit floaty. So yeah, I'm a bit of a traditionalist there. Anyway, so this is what you will be greeted with when you load up LSDJ. Okay, so we've got all these different numbers, which at first can feel quite alienating. So we're going to have a little look through and explore what they actually mean and hopefully make a bit more sense of all of this. So in terms of controls, amazingly enough, everything is done via the four face buttons and the D-pad to do absolutely all of your music creation and playback. So in short, select acts like a shift key. Start is an action key like play or stop. A and B are action buttons when you're creating and moving around and copying and pasting your music. And the D-pad, of course, is used to navigate. So when you first load up LSDJ, you will be greeted with this screen, which we call the song screen. And that is where, unsurprisingly, your main songs are kept. You can load up other songs. There are save files. You simply hold select and up, and that will take you to your project screen up at the top there. And you can go down and you can load and save different songs. But I've put all my separate tunes and jingles on this one save file. And you can see they're all separated out into these different blocks. So what I did was I created one or two, and then I copy pasted them and made various modifications. So they're all variations on the same theme. Now, if you've got gaps in between of these little hyphens, then that means that if you press play on this section, it will play it once like I'm playing now. But when it finishes, it will keep looping. 
and it will loop over and over until you press the start button again, at which point it will stop. So in terms of all of these numbers that we've got here, you'll notice that there's some numbers and some letters. That's because this is base 12. Now that might seem a bit intimidating at first, but it's not really anything you need to worry about. Just know that in addition to the digits zero to nine, you will also encounter A to F. And that just allows for more individual cases to be saved. And you can have numbers going all the way up past 100 while still using two columns. So it's just an efficiency thing. And it's something you get used to surprisingly quickly. In terms of the general display, what happens here is what you see on the different channels while you are playing. So it says one, two, W, N. So that's the pulse channel one, pulse channel two, wave channel and the noise channel. So the Game Boy sound chip has four separate channels, which are these here, that will all play at the same time. So if I look at my little breakdown that I just played there, if I go into the pulse channel one, this is what it sounds like on its own. So in there, I created a kick drum. Uh, you can also use the wave channel to create kick drums. I'll just go over to the wave channel. Uh, in there, I've got a bass line. So in there, I wanted quite a continuous bass line and you can intersperse it with the kick drum, but you lose some of the bass. So that's why I put that into pulse channel one because I've also got pulse channel two for more of my lead melodies. So we'll see what that sounds like on its own. And then on the very far side there, we've got the noise channel, which is just static. Basically, it's just like white noise, but you can shape it and structure it to create uh, different beats and drums and so on. So we'll have a quick listen to how that sounds. And then again, when we play them all at once, Now what you can do is you can take entire bits of the song and you can clone them. So you can copy them and you can paste them and then you can convert them to a whole separate entity because if you just copy and paste them, they'll have the same number. So if you've got like your pulse block 3.9 there and you do another 3.9 here, if I edit that one, it will edit this one as well. So you have to clone them and you simply just hold down select button, press B and then A, and it will convert it into its own entity. The same arrangement, but separate. So that if you edit it, it won't interfere with your original file. So I do that quite a lot. Uh, if we go down to this one here, I think, uh, if we look inside there, you'll see that the chain itself has much more in it. On that first riff that I played you, there's just basically two. That zero, zero at the bottom is a little bit of a gap. And that means it doesn't automatically jump straight into looping it again and again and again, which just makes it a bit neater for when you're recording that you get a chance to actually stop it and break off as, a, as an end of the tune. But if we look at this one that we've got here, um, this is one of the ones that I did for like a sort of closing credits, kind of longer jingle. This is our chain for the noise channel. We've got a same length chain in here and here. You can do like a, a half length chain and what that would do is it would just repeat it twice while the other ones play once. And still because you've got the gap between these sections in the song, it won't hop on to the next bit there. So if we play all of these together, we'll take a little look. And while it's playing, I'll dip in and out of each channel and you can see what's happening. And you can also keep an eye on this area here and see that it will show all these separate notes like I've got in here. Um, it will keep going from one bit to the next, to the next, to the next, and that will be displayed in this section here. So let's play it and take a little look. And there you go. So that is that whole section. And a lot of what I did there was I copied and pasted the original tune in and then created more and more blocks, used the same instruments. Now, speaking of instruments, you can actually create your own sounds in the software by going into separate panels. So I'm moving around here by holding select. So I've got select held there and moving left or right. So at the bottom here, I've got my little navigation menu. So you've got P, S, G, C, P, I, T, and this seems all a bit confusing at first, but it's very quick to get used to. So S is your main one, that's your song screen, okay? Above that is your project menu, where you can save your file, you can change your display, you can change all sorts of different settings. And below that is your groove menu. So you can actually shift how the tempo actually moves along by using your groove settings. And then if we go to the right, we've got C, which is your chain, P, which is your phrase, that's like your individual loop, like, 
So that's made up of individual notes. So each note on there, such as my kick drum, or my A sharp there, or my G sharp. You can move those around, you can edit those. And as we are in the chain mode there, we've got all these separate phrases. If I'm in like phrase one there, and then I just navigate without select, and I can move up and down and select individual notes. And if I scroll all the way down, it'll take me to the next phrase in the chain. And it'll keep looping that unless I move down. So that'll take me to the next one and so on. Uh, so in the first column, we've got the notes. And in the second one, we've got the instrument. So this there is instrument 2C. So this is like quite a short little blip. Hold select again and move to the right. And that'll take you to I, which is your instrument screen. So these are the different parameters that you can edit to make each individual instrument sound different. So if we go back out of this chain and we go into the pulse two, we'll go into that chain there, 44. So if we play that one, it'll just kind of loop through each individual phrase. But if we go onto the phrase screen, I'm just on 17 there. So that's what this phrase sounds like. Now, if I go into the instrument screen, I've got all these different variables which I can edit to make my sound different. And you'll see here on the wave output, it's quite low there. So if I go back out and I start playing this, and then we go in and start messing about with the wave shape that we've got, you'll see that it starts to sound different. Now, if I've edited that as the whole instrument, if we go out and hear the whole song. Now, if I go back in and I go to that individual instrument and I change its property to the wave sounding a little bit more bloopy, if that makes sense, and we come back out and play it. changes the whole feel of the song so even just by changing one parameter of one instrument you can change it quite a bit and I do that a lot what I'll do is you can clone instruments in the same way that you can clone little tunes or blocks so if you create one instrument you like how it sounds you just make a copy of it you shift a little bit of it and then you've got another instrument and another and so on but I'm gonna make sure that that is back as it should sound I like that kind of sharp sound to it, so I'll put that back in, and then we're back where we were. So along the navigation at the bottom, we've seen the song, the chain, the phrase. So the song is made up of chains, the chains are made up of phrases, and the phrases are comprised of different notes using different instruments. So we've got the instrument part, and then we've got what's called the table menu, where you can create individual commands to affect particular instruments. Say, for instance, on this one, whenever this instrument is used, there is a vibrato applied to it, or a, an extra rise in tone, or anything like that. You can really mold how each individual instrument sounds. Then you comprise your instruments in here. You don't have to have just one instrument in a phrase. You can have a mixture of different ones. So on this one, yes, they are all done with that instrument OE, which is my pulse one long, and I play that one there. But in some cases, like for instance on the noise channel, where I've made lots of different ones because I've got like my closed hi hat, I've got my open hi hat, and I've got a snare. Uh, you can use the different instruments in sequence to create a slightly different overall effect. Now, this will all feel really overwhelming at first. There is actually a live mode as well. You'll see at the top, it says song. Now that's like your safe mode. That's what I like using because I'm not much of a risk taker. So when I press start, it will just start playing there. But with live mode, you can start to select different bits of songs and create songs on the fly based on different phrases and things that you've made. There's lots of different things that you can do. So you can also set the tempo. If you look at how I'm playing here, it says the tempo in the top right there. That's 120, okay. But you can actually put a command in there too. So we haven't talked about commands yet. So we've got the notes and the instruments in a phrase, and we've also got the commands. Now, if you double tap with the A button, it will always tell you what a command does. So we've got the T command there. If I double tap there, it'll say at the top, T is set tempo, and it'll give you the parameters to get certain results. And the same thing will happen if you are inserting any other command. So I've got V, vibrato, 
W is wave, Z is randomize, and so on. So you've got lots of different commands that you can apply to the notes as well to make those sound different. And what I've done here is T78. Now that's not 78. Remember, this is hexadecimal, so it's base 12, not base 10. So 78 is actually 120. That might seem a bit complex, but all you've got to do is sort of fudge it until you find the sort of tempo you want. Um, so if I was going through this and I had it on, say, 7A there and I press play, you'll see that comes up as 122. So I know if I want that to be 120, I'll just knock this down by two. All I'm doing there is holding A and moving left and right to go up and down there. Um, so I know I've got that on 120 now. Now what I did was I messed around with some of the riffs that I'd done. I started with them all at this kind of tempo. And then I did a few where I wanted them to sound different, but I wanted to keep them in the same song. So I put a command in at the start of some of the phrases to set the timing. So if I have a look at this one here that starts with 4-5, and I go in the first phrase, you'll see I've set that command as T. 5A. So where my tempo was 120, if I press start now and start playing that, slows right down and I've got a tempo of 90. And you can see that I messed about with a few different drum beats. Uh, so I took the same basic tune, tinkered about with a bit and uh, yeah, I got this. Okay, and I think this one had a different tempo as well. But all of this is, once you put the hard work in actually creating your tunes, you can keep copy, pasting, tinkering, tweaking, creating all sorts of different tunes. Okay, the only thing is, if you forget to put a tempo command in at the start of each block, if you're messing about with different tempos, you can end up with some going slower than before. But I don't actually have to change the settings on this one that was meant to run faster. I'll just go up to one that I know runs faster, which will bring me back to 120. Then I'll go down to this one and try playing it again. So I did that one as just like a shorter version. So I just use a few blocks from a different uh, song and drop them all in here. So that'd work as like a nice little link or something like that between sections in the video. That was what I planned. Then what you can do rather than like the smaller bits or where you've got the individual chains made up of quite a lot of phrases, you can actually create like a mega song. So this one here, normally in these sections, if I'm writing a new song, normally they would have four phrases within the chain. It just helps keep track of how the song is going and you can alternate and tweak as you go. In this case, I know it finishes on seven, but remember we've got a zero, so I've done these as eights. So it'll play through the whole eight. Then I've got lots of different variations that take me through this whole song, which goes on for a long time. I won't bore you with the whole lot, but I have made a whole load of recordings, so I'm gonna share those on my SoundCloud at some point and hopefully link them in the description too. But this, I think I'm calling like mega long loop mix or something like that. Um, but this is all based on the sound same sort of loop, the same sort of riff, so if I play this bit. And then this one is a slight variation with some other tweaks. And then I've got another one, again, changed slightly again. And another one here and so on. And you'll notice a lot of repeats, like 1-6, one, 1-6 six, one, six is repeated again. The drums on this are the same all the way through. I could have got a bit of variation, but I didn't want it to be too distracting, so I left all of those the same. The bass changes quite a bit. There's an interesting change I made on the bass, I just want to show you. So we're on the 1-7 channel, that sounds like this. And on the other, the 1-E, it's slightly different. All right, so the key difference between those bass patterns is simply the pitch. So if we look on this one, where it goes. So if we look on here, it's all on the first octave right the way through, so it sounds like this. 
So that's alternating between the two different bass instruments. But then if I come back out and I go on to this one, you'll see that although the instruments are still on the 09 and the OB, every time I go on to the 0B, I've changed it to the next octave up. So instead of my, what well, it would have sounded like that, I've knocked it up an octave, so it sounds like that. So the difference between the two is on this one, it's kind of consistent with the note, but shifts the instrument. And then on this one, it's much more pronounced because it shifts up to the next octave every time it swaps instrument. And you don't have to program all these from scratch. You just simply copy, paste, and edit. And the funny thing is, when it comes to actually describing how to do this using the commands, it's hard because it becomes muscle memory so quick when you're trying to explain it to somebody else. <laughs> you, you, can, you can kind of confuse yourself. Uh, but basically, you can select, you can move, you can copy, you can paste, you can clone, and you can get up to a point where it's almost like just automatic. You look at the screen, you know what you want it to do, and your thumbs will do the work. Just, it sounds like I'm being a bit weird, but trust me, it just, it does go like, like that. In terms of other advice, this isn't supposed to be like a full tutorial on how to create this music. The manual for LSDJ on the website where you will find the ROM will tell you everything you need to know to make amazing music. It's amazing how many people download the software, look for tutorials like this, and then start asking a load of questions that are answered in the manual. <sighs> My ADHD brain does struggle with sitting and reading, but if you go through one little chunk at a time in that manual, you will learn so much and you will have a solid, deep understanding of the software. I can't recommend looking at the manual enough. But in the meantime, thank you for coming here and having a look at what I've been showing you. There's just one more thing I want to cover, and that's where I was talking about looping over and over before. Uh, if you create a sound that you don't want to loop and you're trying to record it, remember you need to have a blank file, uh, just one blank phrase at the bottom so it gives you a chance to stop off. If you want it to loop continuously though, like if I go to this one I've got at the bottom I think, this one does just loop over and over again. This is one where I found quite an interesting effect. The 1C and the 1F are very similar. The 1C creates this sort of melody. And then what I did was I created another version of it. So if I go into say B, E there, that's a lot of A sharps, C sharp, D sharp, and I'm using the third, fifth, fourth, sixth, fifth, and so on octave. And then if I go into the next column, it's almost a copy of that, um, but I'm slightly lower down on the octaves. I knocked everything down an octave. And what I also did, and that's why this particular phrase looks strange is I moved the start point to halfway through the first phrase and I borrowed the last part of the last phrase and put it at the beginning so they're slightly off kilter it's sort of almost in the round so between those two now rather than sound well this is the first one and this is the second one So you see you've got the end and then the start and then when you play the two together it just creates this wonderful little mix between the two of them. It's just like a really nice balance between the two. So when you first load up LSDJ, I'm well aware that it can seem quite intimidating and complex. However, after watching this video, I'm hoping that you can see that it is an accessible, surprisingly powerful, and most of all, 
fun piece of software that's well worth your time and effort. Despite that initial steep learning curve, you'll be making your own tunes in no time and there's nothing more satisfying than hearing back those 8-bit tunes that you know you've created and sequenced yourself. Now in terms of taking the music from the Game Boy onto the videos, I started recording some stuff but I think that's a whole video in itself. So if you're interested to find that out, let me know in the comments and I'll start putting together a new video. But in short, I use a piece of software called Audacity. It's free. It does really high quality recordings and because I've modified my Game Boy with the audio out, I can simply connect that straight to my laptop and record directly. If you want some more control over it, you can incorporate mixers and so on, but generally it's as simple as connecting your Game Boy to the computer and recording the sound that you're playing. So that's Little Sound DJ and that's me all done until next time. As I said, I've got plans for moving forward with this channel, so if you want to see where that goes, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell and all that shenanigans. So if this is your first time on my channel, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're one of the returning faithful, honestly, your support is so much appreciated. You're awesome. As always, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and I love reading your comments. So do keep those coming. So if you know anyone else who might enjoy this video or any of my other content, please let them know, share it, and um, we'll hopefully get more people on board and keep growing this channel. In the meantime, this is Joe Bleeps signing off from the shed and I'll see you next time. Bye.